All right, why don't we get started? Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, just to let you all know to sign up for any of our upcoming webinars or, or view any previous home inspection webinars, you can visit nachi.org slash webinars. My name is Jacob. I'm with InterNACHI, the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And today we have on Christian Adams with Repair Pricer. Christian is going to talk about targeting and acquiring top agents for your home inspection business. If you have any questions for Christian, please type them up in the chat feature. And near the end of his presentation, we'll answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so Christian, if you're ready, I'll hand the mic over to you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, folks. Um, good morning. Well, everybody on the East Coast, good afternoon as well. Um, as Jacob said, uh, my name is Christian Adams. I'm the co-founder of Repair Pricer. Um, if you guys are familiar with us, awesome. If not, um, we will teach you a little bit about, about Repair Pricer today as well. Jacob, could you set up screen sharing for me quickly as well so I can pop this presentation up? Yes. One second, folks. All right, and I'll get started. All right, there you go, perfect. Thank you. All right, yeah, and as Jacob said, what I'm gonna be showing you today, everybody, is how you can target and acquire um, top referring realtors, agents, and brokers to kind of help you build um, your home inspection business. Um, why I kind of know a lot about that, I am actually a former real estate broker. I started off in Dallas in about 2004 with a small team of three agents, and I helped scale that um, over about a five-year period to about 150 agents selling around $150 million a year in real estate um, across the Texas market. Um, and what I'm going to really show you is how you as a home inspector can kind of use those same methods that I did as a broker to grow your business um, by working with with those agents in your markets. Um, I think a lot of people think when they think about a real estate broker or an agent, maybe the, their main job is actually selling homes. When you get to the broker level and you're building a team and you're building a brokerage up, you traditionally, a lot of people will stop selling homes and your function really becomes about recruiting other agents to come and work for you because there's only so much work that an individual agent can do essentially. So when you get to that broker level, you really start thinking less about selling homes yourself and more about trying to find really, really good top producing agents to come and work for you instead so you can produce um, you know, your own numbers on a larger scale. So what I'm gonna show you today is the methods that I used as a broker to go out and recruit over 300 uh, top producing agents in the Texas market to come and work for me basically. And often they, they, they pay to come and work for you. Uh, and I think it's a model that we can relate quite well back to the home inspection industry, because if you can become a part of that agent sales process, they're basically going to automate referrals to you. Busy, busy top producing agents don't have time to go out and shop for home inspectors every day. They want a solid partner they can work with on a daily basis. Um, backing up quickly, you know, sometimes when I talk to home inspectors at conferences and things, they say, so I, you know, I don't like agent referrals. I prefer to work with my own consumers. I completely understand that. But I think there needs to be a, a division here that's made between bad agent referrals and good agent referrals. OK, the reason that good agent referrals, referrals I feel are important to our customers, we work with hundreds and hundreds of home inspection firms across the U.S. We, we help them actually build referrals from agents is these reasons listed here. Right. So. They're pretty much free. Um, at Repair Price, we actually work to go and bring you business from agents. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but um, they don't really cost you anything. If you can actually target and acquire a top referring agent, like I said, they don't have time to shop for a home inspector every day. Once they've found a good provider, they'll tend to kind of stick with you. Um, agents are also, they're already trained to give and receive referrals. Most top producing agents in the US will be sending referrals daily across state lines into cities to other brokers and agents in their networks. They understand the importance of referrals. Okay. Um, and then those, those inspectors I've talked to you say, you know, I, I don't take referrals from competitors. Oh, sorry. I don't take referrals from agents. Think about where that referral is going if you don't take it. It's going to go to a competitor that's going to help them grow their business. 
And I know that when I was a broker and I was an agent, even if a client of mine had gone out and they found uh, an inspector they like and the website's really good, they can schedule online, the marketing's fantastic and the reviews are great, they would still come back to me and ask me every time, hey, Christian, do you know this inspector? Do you think they do a good job? They always want their agent's advice because you're so entrenched in the transaction. So just keep that in mind. Even if you are getting business, you could be leaving some money on the table from those agents who say, you know what? No, I've never heard of them. I've never talked to them. I'm not familiar with them. You could be okay, but I haven't really experienced their service. Um, and then for some of you listening and watching as well, in some markets I've found as we've expanded across the US, the agents are actually the ones booking the inspections, um, which is a little strange to me coming from Texas. That would never happen here. But um, in some states and cities I've seen, it's the agents who are actually calling the shots. So you need to make sure that you are at least in front of them and you know being one of their preferred providers so that when they do go and book the inspection, you're someone they consider. So how do you as an inspector find out like what's a good referral, what's a bad referral? Okay, that's the trick here. We don't wanna be talking to every realtor. We don't have time to talk to every realtor. So we've got to think about using data to do this, okay? Repair Pricer is an artificial intelligence company. We're a data company at heart. Um, and that's why we use these methods internally to do the same thing. We don't want to work with um, you know, agents that don't sell homes. Same that a home inspector would not want to spend time with an agent who is not selling homes because you're not gonna get any business from them. So when you look at the good agents, they're busy and they're productive, okay? they're closing a lot of homes. They, they have to be busy, right? So they're successful as well. Um, they also tend to be honest and loyal. And I mean, the long-term agents that have been in the business a long time. Most of them have built up their business through client referrals, okay? They're money motivated. To be a top producer, you've got to want to get up at five o'clock in the morning and get home at 10 o'clock at night. That's just kind of the way it is with real estate is you work seven days a week, often 365. But for all of this to work, they've got to be very organized and systematic. This means they have processes in place. They have CRMs in place, like my company that I had, whenever we, we were ready to essentially tell a client, congratulations, you've got a home under contract, now it's time to get a home inspection. That was automated. My clients did not fill out a form and put the home inspectors in there. We had that list of inspectors already in there and that agent had their individual list of home inspectors in there. So there was not even an opportunity for someone else to be referred because we'd already built that functionality. So it was just about being productive and saving them time. So those are kind of the good agents you want to think about. The bad agents, maybe for those of you who've just experienced bad agents out in the field, um, they're not busy. They've got all the time in the world. Maybe real estate is a part-time gig for them. Um, they are the ones that will come to the home inspection and spend three hours there following around behind you because they've got nothing else better to do, okay? They've got a poor sales history. That's an important part of data we can dig into and I'll show you how to do that later. You can find out, have they sold a lot of homes or not? Is this agent a worthwhile referral source for me? If they're not, if they've only sold two homes a year, they should not be an important client, essentially. And you sometimes those bad agents that hold that over you, oh, you know, you're a deal killer. I'll never refer clients to you again. Well, if they're only referring you two clients a year, you probably shouldn't care about that. You, you want to care about the, the agent that's going to tell their client, hey, you know what? Maybe this home's not right for you. You should walk away. And with that, you get that lack of business etiquette, right? They're, they're rude. They're pushy, maybe. Um, people like that don't tend to be that successful long-term. Uh, you have more of a serv servant attitude, we call it, with real estate to be successful long-term. You have to want to help people. You have to want to make uh, help them make the right decision. Tell them when it's time to say no and walk away, right? But because they don't do that, they always need to close the deal, right? They're cash hungry. They are not doing millions of dollars a year in commission. Um, and I'll dig into some of the data on that later and show you how dire it is for the, the average agent out there and how little money they make, and which is why they're so pushy um, and they don't view the inspection as a valuable tool. These are the bad agents, remember, and they're disorganized. They will not even know the phone number for their preferred inspector. They won't be in their phone. They won't have a CRM firing stuff out. They will just be all over the map and probably just tell their client, hey, go find anybody. It doesn't matter. You know, one home inspection is the same as the other, which is, as we know, that that's not true. So just understand there are bad referrals out there. There are good referrals out there. What I'm going to show you today is hopefully how to go and get those good referrals, uh, the agents that you want to be sending you uh, your business. Okay. 
to quickly break down what's going on in the real estate industry too, we've seen a big rise in the 100% commission model recently. What that means is that brokerages have moved from being what the way that I had my company structured, which is the traditional model on the left, right? We made our money from selling homes. I did not charge my agents fees and like technology fees and printing and marketing. We gave them a lot of tools, but to come work for me, you had to be a top selling agent. If you weren't doing $3 million a year in sale, you wouldn't get an, an interview to come in uh, basically and, and get an opportunity to come work for us. And I told people, I said, look, I don't, it doesn't matter how hard you're hustling. If you're not doing this full time, if you don't have the financial wherewithal as an agent to spend money on marketing, to tell clients, no, it's time to walk away. If you need to close that deal, you're not going to come work for me. You're not going to be a top producer, right? There's, there's a mindset that's different there. Um, we focused on sales not agent count. That was important. So that's when I say, oh, you know, we only had 100 to 150 agents at a time. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the average uh, agent for me was making six figures a year. I liked it that way. I got to knew, like I knew the agents, their families, um, they were having success. We, you know, we were able to give them health insurance, things like this that traditional brokerages can't do. We had a company that we were proud of. The 100% model that you're seeing, they will hire anybody who can fog a mirror. Um, if they've got the money, if they've got the license, they will literally take their fees and say, congratulations, you're going to make a million dollars this year. And they have people that their job is purely just to go and recruit new agents to get fees in. They make their money off fees. This is how they can do that 100% model. They tell the agents, you're going to keep 100% of your commission. And they will convince them that they're going to be successful. This makes that brokerage look bigger than they are, right? You may hear brokers say, oh, we've got 500 agents. Cool. How many homes on average? is each agent selling per year, right? You may only have 5% of those agents, 3% of those agents are even selling homes on a consistent basis, but it's easy to be drawn in by these brokerages that look big, that may want you to pay advertising fees and that kind of thing to go and advertise to their agents um, and go and do like lunch and learns and breakfast meetings. Oh, there'll be a hundred people there. Yeah, but how many agents in that room are actually selling homes this week? How many could actually send me a referral? So just keep that in mind. When somebody's trying to convince you, oh, we're a massive brokerage, you're like, yeah, but how many homes did you sell last year? So with that, I, you know, I'm in some of the Facebook groups for home inspectors and things like that. And I, I talked to everybody on a recent basis. I was in Vegas for the super conference. I'm going to IEB next week. And I, I, people will ask me, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing for my marketing efforts right now. Why is it not working? All right. So Two of the ones that I see consistently touted as a way to get business, which I personally don't believe these work that well in most markets, open houses, right? Open houses typically are staffed by new agents who do not have clients and they will go sit in an open house for an experienced agent who has the listing with the hopes of picking up a buyer, all right? This is just a tried and true method that agents think you know, works to get business. I did it when I was a new agent. I did actually get my first sale and listing from using this method, but after that, it didn't really work. But you will typically only find new agents. You're not normally going to find the listing agent in that house. And even if you do, the listing agent is not dictating who is actually going to be uh, buying the home and who they're going to be choosing for the home inspector. So just keep that in mind. Even if you do find the agent that's in an open house, they're probably a listing agent, not a buyer's agent. They might specialize in listings, not buyings. And while pre-listing inspections are growing, it's not a big part of most people's business. Real estate office walk-ins. Typically the person at the desk is gonna be an admin, um, like a gatekeeper, or they're going to be again, a new agent. So at my brokerage, um, for agents that wanted it, we did have phone time. They could sit up front and they could receive phone calls on the office phone for a dedicated period of time per day. And what they were hoping to get was either calls from like our Google uh, local number, people looking to list or, you know, manage homes, or they were also hoping to get people walking in, you know, to set appointments to buy homes and basically get buyers and people like that. These are not the seasoned agents. The seasoned agents that have big referral networks and systemized processes and marketing are not sitting in the real estate office waiting for somebody to walk in, right? They're out doing listing presentations, they're showing homes, um, they're doing other activities. So my advice personally, is this is not a great way to get business. Um, there are better ways to do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that using data. These methods are free. You could do them today, literally sitting here with me and, and I could show you exactly how it works. So 
Where do we find good agents? It's data. If you're friends with a title company, title companies typically can run MLS access and they could actually tell you who the top producing agents are in your market. And they can typically do that by drilling down to the buyer's agents. Keep that in mind. Most people that refer home inspectors are buyer's agents, um, not the listing agents. Some cross over and that is market specific too. So a title company can actually give you that information. Whether or not they're gonna give it to you, that's up to you and your relationship with title reps. Um, but they do have their information. So know that that's a resource. There's two other really great places. Um, the Zillow Agent Finder tool. Um, most people in there do pay a small advertising fee. So keep in mind, um, you're not going to see every agent in your market there and, and their sales history. But if failing that, the realtor.com find an agent tool. That's a really good tool you can go to. Both these are free. You log in online. I'm going to do it live with you guys here in just a minute. And I'm going to show you how we can drill down to a market and essentially find out um, who are the agents who are actually selling homes in my market? What are their names and their phone numbers, their web addresses? These are the people that are actually selling houses, right? These are the ones you want to be talking to, the ones that are busy and productive, and they're going to systemize you and hopefully send you referrals moving forward. With this in mind, um, it's very tempting as an inspector to do mass marketing. I'm not talking about SEO and review marketing. That's very important. Even if a, an agent has essentially recommended you, a lot of buyers nowadays will go and check out your online presence, okay? So just keep that in mind. You're still gonna have people look you up. They wanna see good reviews. They wanna see that you actually have reviews and they wanna see that they can find your website and, and look at you. So it's, it's gonna be more like top of mind awareness. It's branding. It's gonna back up the idea that my agent has recommended this person. Let me go find them. Yes, they are legitimate. I really like the way that, that this looks. Um, just keep that in mind. Social media too, great for top of mind awareness. They may find you on social media pages. Um, so you should still be doing those activities. What I mean by mass marketing is typically mass email, max, mass text messaging to the agents. All right. If you look at these figures here, and I ran this very recently um, last week for this presentation, as of, I think it was last Thursday, in Texas, we had 180,347 active licensed, a licensed agents. That, that's insane. We're living in a time in the US when we actually have more licensed realtors than homes for sale, which just gives you an idea of the prevalence of how many agents are not selling homes. All right, I drilled down in this data and I'm gonna show you quickly. Of those agents, there were only just over 5,000 that had sold over 12 homes per year. So that's one home per month. So even in the, the top 5,000, the top 3%, all of those could only essentially refer out um, one home per month. That's, that's not a lot of business for multi-inspectors, even for you know, not a non-multi-firm inspector. How many agents do you have to have referring you business for that to be true? So what I'm going to show you quickly is exactly how that breaks down. Um, we did this using the Zillow method that I'm going to show in a minute. So as you'll see, um, it, I went and scraped the name of the agent, the company they're working for, and their annual sales and their phone number, and I'll show you how you can do this. So as you look at these top agents here, you've got some with massive amounts of sales, right? These are typically big teams. All these are fantastic opportunities. You're talking about like almost a referral a day if you get these people. But as you go down and we start to go down, we're already getting down to the less than 100 homes per year, okay? And we're only at 236 agents in the entire state of Texas. And you do just see as we keep creeping down and down and down, these numbers start whittling down until eventually I'm going to show you what's more surprising. How many agents sold no homes last year? Here. You're at almost 70% of the agents are not selling any homes that have been recorded. Okay. Um, these are the people I'm talking about who are on that 100% model. Okay. So they are basically being convinced by a brokerage to come work for them to hand their, you know, to hang their license with them to pay for marketing and they don't end up selling homes. So when you do mass marketing, you can do this shotgun effect 
and you're going to dilute your messaging, you're going to dilute your spend on any marketing that you're doing because you're going after people who actually can't even send you a referral. It's not physically possible for them to refer you a home inspection client because they don't have any, because they don't have any buyers. All right. So what we're going to do today is really drill down and find out how do we go out there and find out who these people are um, that you want to work with. One part of this, um, for those of you not familiar with what a farm is in real estate, for an agent, Farming is essentially where you go out and you identify a geographical area and you say, that's where I'm going to target for my listings and my buyers. And I'm going to specifically target that area. Uh, me personally, when I was an agent, I actually did a very, very small area. I started off in the M Streets area of Dallas, which is like historic homes, larger homes. And then I started incorporating some areas around there, but I never went more than about three or four miles um, from my office. As a home inspector, that probably doesn't make sense. You may want to do a much larger area. For me as an agent, it was important because I got to know a lot of like the high rise buildings and the condo buildings, the kind of clients that I was working with. That's what they wanted was these luxury high rises. And often inside one building, there were 600 units. So it was a lot easier for me as an agent to focus geographically like that. But you may want to do a city, you know, a metropolitan area, um, I actually know some inspectors in Dallas that really only focus on a very, very small part of town with very high end homes and they're very successful doing that. But I think this is an important part of the marketing um, as a home inspector is to kind of think, you've got to think business operations as well, right? How much gas is it costing you to get to these homes that you're inspecting? Um, what kind of wear does that do in your vehicle? How much time does it take you? Imagine if you were working in a, a metropolitan area where you, you know, take you an hour and a half to get across town or something like this. That's a lot of wasted time and profit. So I think this is important. Um, again, I understand this really does depend where you live, right? If you're in a rural area, you're probably not going to have a choice that you may have to drive 40 minutes an hour, hour and a half sometimes to get to properties. But if you are able to focus geographically, I would recommend it. Um, and we'll kind of see how and why that is important as well um, down the road. So Typically, because agents are farming an area, if you farm an area, you will run into these same agents again and again. So an agent that may have worked with you on the buy side may see you on the list side and so on and so forth. So it comes back to that top of mind awareness that they're like, OK, you know, this inspector is really popular. You know, he or she does a really good job for our clients. We should we should focus on this. And we should potentially use them as a preferred vendor because they know this area, they know the homes, those of you who work with historic homes or condo buildings, um, you get to learn about the type of home and that kind of thing. So think about a geographic area that you would like to target. All right. And like I said, it can be a city. That's fine. Um, those of you in the big, big metropolitan areas, though, maybe you do want to focus on a specific area, um, a suburb or something like that, that where you live that you can get to know the agents. Maybe you run into them at the grocery store, you run into them you know, at church or a coffee meeting or a restaurant or something like that. I found as an agent, when I ran into my clients organically, it really helped my referrals. Um, I would always just pop a card in the hand you know, again and again, or buy them a coffee or buy them a beer or something like this. And it, it seemed like a very organic experience because it was, because I was moving my clients to that area. So I had hundreds of clients living in the same part of town. They knew each other. They went to the same gyms. Um, so they would, oh, that was your agent too. You know, I've been to parties where clients I did not know knew each other showed up at the same time. So just keep that in mind. And what I'm going to show you is how to drill down geographically and find out which of these agents in your market are actually selling homes. Who should you be talking to? Who should you be focusing on? All right. So I'm going to go back quickly to the realtor.com find an agent tool. Um, you can always actually, I, I, we have a page on our website. Um, you can find all this information on as well. I'll probably have Jacob share that with you guys after the webinar. But these tools, you can just type in realtor.com, find an agent, or the Zillow tool, find an agent. So you will see when you land on these, it's going to ask you, you know, who exactly you want to find. I would say focus on agents, but you can search by teams as well on realtor.com. And let's say we did... Excuse me, we've got a 404 there for some reason. Okay, so what I searched with realtor.com, find an agent. Apologies for this, guys. The site's crashed. All right. Let's do Austin, Texas. You don't need to do an agent name. You can click search. By the way, you can drill down here using credentials. 
For those of you who don't know what an ABR is, that's an accredited buyer's representative. That is someone who typically works on the buyer side. Um, I never had it and I was a big buyer's agent. So you, you might be able to find a buyer's agent specifically by drilling down by ABR. I never personally did designations. I didn't find they helped with my clients, but a lot of agents, especially those who have been in for a while, they will do that as part of their educational requirements. They will say, okay, I need to do credits this year. Anyway, I need to do my mandatory continuing education. Let me go and be an ABR. So say we pick that and we go and search here. What it's gonna give you is just a list of those agents. Now, keep in mind, some of these agents, it's going to actually rank them randomly or it's going to rank them if they've paid to be at the top of a list in case uh, somebody is trying to find them. So what you can actually do instead of going by recent activity or another ranking by highest ratings, you can actually go by most sold listings. OK, for sale listings is going to drill down to listing agents. Typically sold listings is going to combine all of it by and list site. OK. So if I was a home inspector and I was working in the Austin market and I wanted to find somebody that I want to talk to who can send me a lot of business, probably I would not need to go off this page. Right. So a lot of you are going to say, yeah, but they're probably going to have their home inspectors already. But like, yes, they might. But I'll show you later how you can also kind of overcome those objections. So what I want you to focus on, though, is the listing count versus the buy count. So these are all accredited buyer um, representatives. So you'll see they actually have a lot of sold homes versus the number of listings they have available for sale at the moment, okay? So just focus on that. And as you'll see, you have their name and their phone number. Email address is gonna be hidden. You can find that very easily dependent on your state. Um, if you were looking in Texas, you could go to uh, trek.state.tx.us and you can search by licensee. I would say don't do email marketing to agents. They get inundated with email marketing already. What I'm gonna kind of coach you on is to use the channels they use to communicate, but you need to have your curated list. So as I said here, this is where you find this information. It's the same on Zillow. This information is out there for you, right? So you're not wasting your time pounding the pavement, going to open houses and real estate offices where nobody in there is actually selling homes. You're using the tools at your disposal that are free to go here and find the people that you should be talking to. All right. Um, and so once you've done that, I say in here five to 50, it depends on the size of your business and how many agents you feel you need um, to send you referrals on a recurring basis for you, you know, to make money. Um, so the big companies, you may want to go above and beyond this. You're like, I want the top 100 referring agents in my market. That's awesome. You'll notice that I did go by agent. So as a broker, if you would come to me as a broker and said, hey, you know, Christian, I want to earn your business. I'm like, that's fine. But everybody who works for me is a contractor. They're not an employee. Me as a broker, I cannot dictate. Or sorry, I'm not a broker anymore. But when I was, I could not dictate to my clients that, or sorry, not my clients, my agents that, you know, these are the inspectors you have to use. I couldn't tell them that. I could maybe introduce somebody to lunch and learn. Um, so how, how do you actually, you know, get, get in front of the people who are selling the homes? It's not through the broker. Don't think that way. The brokers are the ones who are gonna to wanna to charge you fees to advertise, right? Find the agents themselves, all right? And I know some of you, saying i'm seeing something in the q a and the chats as well like hey it's intimidating for me i'm going to show you how to do the research and prepare um to basically not feel intimidated to be okay about approaching these people to show them that you can do a good job and to offer something of value right that maybe it's not about how you do the inspection but you've got to have a unique selling point that the agent wants i'm going to i'm going to talk you through that guys i'm going to show you but we've all been there i mean like when i was an agent in 2004, when I first got um, licensed, I didn't have my, my beard that I did now. And I looked about 15 years old. I had this objection from clients all the time of, of you know, do you really know what you're doing? Um, and I, you know, I was a salesperson, so I kind of knew how to overcome that. But it, it was difficult and it can be intimidating. You've just got to get past that and understand that to put food on the table, you know, to be a top producer, you've got to take those steps. And you've just got to prepare for this. I'm going to show you how you prepare to talk to these agents so that you're ready, all right, 
when you do get those questions and when you have those interactions. So first step, be organized, right? Yes, you could just take the information you found on realtor.com and Zillow and put it in a spreadsheet. That's fine. We do that because I also will upload those spreadsheets to our sales teams. We use HubSpot as a CRM. Um, the version we use because we've got thousands of clients uh, is, is not a free version. They do have a great free version that would be probably best for all of you. You can create very clever email sequences, SMS, um, text sequences, workflows, things like this, tasks to keep you on track. Um, you've got to be organized. If you are not doing this consistently, it will not happen. You have to make this a part of your regular business operations, whether it's you or you have a BDR, a business development representative, okay? Someone can do this for you, all right? If you really are that worried about doing this yourself, find somebody you can partner with, um, there's a lot of virtual tools and ways that you can do this at the moment. As long as you're using the correct channels to talk to the agents, you know, um, you will find that maybe you can do conversations via text and meet for a coffee and run into somebody. They've just got to be aware of you and what you can offer them. But you need to do this as a separate activity to your home inspections. So if you're using a CRM for your home inspection clients, that's awesome. But this has to be like a separate job that you do every day or every week that you're focusing on as part of building your business, all right? This is not the same as going out and you know filling the truck with gas and you know checking your tools and the rest of this stuff. This is, this is something else that is a daily or weekly activity that you commit to for it to work. It's not a magic bullet. It's what I trained agents on. I trained them how to get out there and get clients for free and get referrals, but you've got to make it consistent, okay? Um, Going back to the farm concept, what I used to do was drop bottles of wine at the luxury condo buildings that I had my clients in. And normally on a Friday afternoon, I would go in there and I would do um, bottles of wine or champagne on the counter with the concierge. And I would have my business card and a thank you note on there. And I would leave them lined up along the counter with the concierge. And I would give one to the concierge as well because um, they were kind of helping me out, normally sending me referrals as well. What would happen is clients sorry, not clients, but people who lived in the building would walk in on a Friday afternoon and see a bottle of wine for everybody else and their name's not there. And it's immediately this like fear of missing out. It's what, what's going on here? But like, oh, it's an agent who works this building. Um, these are just thank you gifts for his clients, right? So it was branding for me, but I did it consistently so everybody would see it and they were like, oh, that's the guy that does that thing. So you've got to be organized about it. You've got to be consistent, okay? While you're doing that, think about what is it that makes you unique, okay? Let's say... You're a new inspector, but you used to be a health inspector or you used to be a contractor or an HVAC tech, okay? Just your experience could make you unique. Maybe you came from the healthcare field, right? And you have a bedside manner that people want to you know, know about. That can be something that's a unique selling point, right? Why would they choose you? Why would this agent send you business over somebody else? For repair price of clients, it's the functionality we give our inspectors where they can offer repair estimates alongside their home inspection reports. A lot of top producing agents really want that, but it doesn't have to be repair price, right? It could be infrared. It could be some of the warranty products out there. I would say think about what a top producer values, and that's time is one of the things. I always used to use inspectors that had the super keys. They don't have super keys anymore. They have the Bluetooth ones in most markets, but it meant I didn't have to go to the property to let the inspector in. I didn't have to worry about them getting in. I didn't have to worry about them being locked out and me taking, you know, wasting time as an agent. So that was something I really appreciated was an inspector who would value my time. And yeah, I used to pop along at the end sometimes if my, my client wanted me to, but really I was like, inspectors are professional, let them go do their job. They can let themselves in, they can schedule it themselves. Um, so think about time-saving tools, something extra and above and beyond that the agent's going to appreciate that you can offer them. Write it down, right? Write it down and practice explaining what your USP is with somebody else. Maybe you've got another buddy or a home inspector or a partner, you know, that you can talk to and say, hey, does this sound convincing? Um, I would say maybe not a partner because they tend to be overly supportive. Maybe find someone that's a friend that doesn't really understand what you do as a home inspector and, and kind of explain that to them. Hey, here's why I can save this agent time or I can make their lives easier or I can help them, right? Um, that, that's the main key, right? Then 
go out and look at your competitors. Who are you competing against in your market? Okay. Who is going to be somebody that you're going to have a rebuttal from that agent? No, I already get that product from that person or they already do that service. Okay. Um, maybe you need to know their pricing. I will say as it from a top producing agent, if you're focusing on pricing, then that's probably not, I never knew what my inspectors charged. My clients would ask me, I was like, it's around $500. I'm not sure you need to ask the inspector. It varies by house. So I don't think pricing is a USP. Um, it's not a very good one. Top producers will not, they're not going to focus on that typically. It's not something they talk about, but look at their offerings, look at how they offer packages and products and that kind of thing. Um, and guys, just let you know, I do see the questions down below. Uh, Jacob and I talk, I'm quickly going to run through this. I might cover some of those in this talk and then I will address them at the end as well. We're going to have time for that. So one, when you're looking at your competitors, you may also find out what they don't have, right? So don't, don't just look at what they do have. What don't they have? What is something you see that nobody else in your market is doing? And what can you offer people? that nobody else has, because that's gonna make you stand out. And that's really important for you to do that. Okay, so do take the time to do this. Use Google reviews, think like a consumer, um, think about the biggest competitors in your market and find out what's something you can do different. Maybe it's because you are you know, a one person shop and you've got a more personalized experience. That may be important, especially to the high end agents. Okay, maybe you focus on luxury homes. You can charge a lot more for the big end, you know, the uh, high end homes. So just be thinking about that when you look at your USP and your competitors, just make sure it really is a unique selling point. All right, this is a tough bit for a lot of people. How do you introduce yourself? How do you get over maybe that fear of making that phone call um, or walking up to somebody and talking to them, okay? And just getting in front of them. What's really interesting, I'm gonna date myself a little bit here, um, even though I'm I'm only 39, but when I first started in real estate, we didn't text, we didn't have like the online portals. I had to go pick up keys from real estate offices. I had a map scope book, there was no GPS, right? If I wanted to talk to somebody, I really, I would have to kind of call them or um, actually walk up to them. Nowadays, the preferred communication tool for agents is a text message, okay? The great thing about that, for those of you who are kind of worried about that sales side of thing is, it lets you do a soft open that sounds exactly how you want it. Okay, I've got some examples of these you can use on our website. Um, again, we'll, we'll post that link with, with the webinar um, when we're done kind of recording it and everything. But think about a way to use the channels that the agent is using to communicate. Another place a lot of agents are nowadays is Instagram. Uh, it seems to have overtaken Facebook, in my opinion, in the real estate space. You can use social media channels to get in front of agents. It's not gonna be hard to find out the Instagram handles of those top agents in your market because they're gonna be using it to advertise, connect with them, interact with them on social media, comment on their posts, send them a text, send them a LinkedIn mail, okay? What you do then is you actually have the ability to control your presence in front of that agent. You can polish your social media, you can make your text messages sound how you want them to, you can make your LinkedIn profile, you know, look really professional. It's what I talked about with that top of mind and that branding of still having that presence on social media and SEO and Google reviews. It gives you more confidence because you're using that polished image to talk to them, okay? You can even, one thing they teach you in sales is you'll see here on the ask for business section of the slide, it says, who are you using now? Would you use us if? What you're seeing is I'm always asking a question. You're not telling them something. You're trying to learn about their business. What would make a home inspection perfect for you? What would make your life easier as a home inspector? Okay. What you're trying to get is you're trying to get them to tell you something so you can respond with, wow, that's really interesting. I actually do offer that. Or I do this for my agents. Okay. The other bit is asking for business. Do not be scared to ask for business. That's for some reason, a lot of people, when they think about sales is they'll tell somebody something, but they won't do the close. Those of you who've seen that uh, amazing movie, Glengarry Glen Ross, the ABC always be closing. It's like a mantra in real estate. You've got to ask for business. When's your next inspection? Do you have an inspection coming up? Do you have a home going under contract soon? 
okay? These are questions that can lead them to tell you, yes, I do. Look, I would love to earn your business, okay? If I genuinely, as when I was an agent, if I had somebody come up, not try and mass market to me, not try and kind of whitewash everything, but genuinely ask me, Christian, I think it's cool that you sell so many homes. I want to be a successful home inspector. I would love the opportunity to show you what I can do. Like I said, a lot of top producers have that servant mentality. I've always been someone that I like mentoring people. I like training agents. That's what I did. I would be like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to give you a shot. You better knock it out of the park. But if you don't ask for that business and you don't tell me why you know you have the right to earn it, I'm probably not going to give you the business. But if you say, hey, Christian, look, I just added super key. You're not going to have to show up for this one. I'm going to record the whole thing on video and send it to you if you want or whatever it is, right? I'm going to get it back to you same day, this USP. I understand the market's tight. You guys have got to make decisions and negotiate quickly. So I'll have the report on site for you. Something like this. Be like, trust me, right? I will earn your business. If you ask for that, more than likely, let's say even if it's 50-50, 50% of the time, if you've created a polished image, if you've taken the time to do that, identify your competition, identify they're a top producing agent, you're going to hear back from them, whether it's a yes or a no. And oftentimes they may say, yes, you know what? Yeah, okay, we're gonna give you a shot. But you have to ask for their business, okay? If you don't, you're not gonna get it. Um, and take a little bit of time to learn about them as an agent. Some of the scripts I have talk about homes they've sold recently, and you can talk to them about, you know, any challenges they found on the inspection report. Was there something that was missed? Anything like this? Not that I'm saying don't go and slate your competition. That's not a great way to do business, in my opinion, but show them that you can offer them something more. Okay. However, doing that once is probably not going to work. It might. You've got to be consistent. You've got to do this all the time. So open with the, you know, the soft thing of, hey, Excited to follow you on social media. You know, I'm a home inspector that specializes in this area. Great to connect, okay? LinkedIn, it's all about like connecting. Instagram, it's more about fun and humor. Um, just think about the ways you communicate with these people. Text message is more like, you know, I just wanted to introduce myself, make sure you had my information if you ever are in a bind for a home inspection. So use your CRM. Those of you who are, you know, a one person firms, maybe your only CRM has only got 15, 20 agents in there. That doesn't matter. You need to be organized about it. Be consistent, be scheduled, show them you're professional, right? That they didn't just hear from you once, that they hear from you consistently, that you still want their business, you want to earn their business. Add these extra channels I called about. And not all the time. It doesn't have to be all about winning their business, but remind them of your USP. Just remind them that you're there if they need you, okay? And just don't drip emails and things to them if you're doing 15, 20 people, it should be easy to keep up kind of organic conversations with them. Um, and again, going back to remind them, what is your unique selling point? How can you help them overcome challenges? And how can you help save them time in their business? Because the one thing an agent and a broker cannot get back is time. You can't buy it. But if you can do something that lets them spend more time with their family or prospect more, or list more homes and do more presentations or be out with buyers more and be less frazzled, um, that's gonna be something that they, they appreciate. So just kind of be thinking about that when you do this. All right, I'm gonna dive into some of the questions quickly here, folks, and just have a look at that and see what we have. So, all right. So yeah, so Paul here was asking kind of something I covered a little bit earlier. As a newer inspector, he's struggling with the concept like targeting those top agents. Um, how do you convince them they do have the preferred inspectors already? Just remember a lot of those preferred inspectors will sometimes be booked up. Um, at, when you're newer, what's really funny is that your USP may be that you have availability, all right? That could be something that's gonna help a busy agent. You look at the Dallas, the Austin, the Houston markets, a lot of the California markets, North Carolina, Atlanta, some of these big areas we work with, there's a very short period of time, okay? to actually get the inspection done and renegotiate or talk about the contract. You could let people know, hey, I do next day inspections. Now you're gonna to have to change that USP once you get established, but just think about it. That's something that could be a USP when you're newer. You have time, right? When you have time, it means that you save the agent time. So you have time to do those activities that make them prefer you as a choice. So that's what I'm saying, sit down, think about your USP, think about your unique situation, brainstorm it with somebody, 
and just find out what is something. But as a new inspector, I would say your biggest bonus that you have is you can get out next day, today, get working. You've got more time. Okay. Um, let me look at some of these. So first one is how many agents an inspector should work with an average? That's a really good question. I'm going to go back and refer to do your data research. Okay. Go and drill down to your farm and your area and find out how many homes are agents selling my market consistently. Set your targets, right? How many, how many inspections do I want to do this year? So you say, I want to do 200 inspections in my first year. How many agents do I need in my market referring business to me to do that? So you're going to reverse engineer. Start off with 200. Maybe in your market, you've only got you know, 10 agents doing 20 homes per year. You would need all 10 of those to potentially hit your target. So maybe now you're targeting 20, 30 agents. All right. Somebody was asking, is it possible to search multiple locations at one time in the search tool? Um, I would say not really, but one thing I want to show you is you, you can just search for a larger um, area, essentially. Um, so rather than doing Austin, Texas, like I know in Dallas, you can do Dallas Fort Worth, I think, maybe on the, on the Zillow site here. Was that a, an option? Let's just see. Some of these larger metropolitan areas, it does let you do it. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay, so question answered there is no, I think you're gonna have to go drill down by at least the city. Uh, I don't think you can do counties. Let's see. Yeah, I'm looking at Hayes County here in Austin. It seems like you can really only neighborhood city and zip. All right, that's at least on the Zillow tool, on the realtor.com. No, oh, hold on, you can do county search on realtor.com. So if you know your county at least you're searching in, instead of just the city, then yes, you can do that. All right, so that's good. Something I didn't know that, so that's great to learn today as well. Um, let me see one other one. I've got two actually. All right, so this one from Gregory, this is great. I've heard from agents uh, that many buyers are not making time for an inspection in these hot markets. How do you, other than time, sell that a buyer should use an inspection? We've done a lot of work on this recently in the press, folks, of getting out there and telling people. We actually did a study um, that we published. You can find it on our website, on our blog. In our surveys across the US, we found that less than 3% of people were actually willing to skip the home inspection. Here's the problem. A lot of people are confusing skipping the home inspection contingency with skipping a home inspection. Part of what we're trying to do for our marketing here at Repair Pricer is actually um, educate consumers that they do not need to get a home inspection just at the time of purchase. Okay, this is something you can think about as a secondary product potentially. Maybe this is a USP that you can offer. Maybe it's the pre-listing inspection side of things. Um, we thought with the hot markets here, with repair price or it's a negotiation tool, right? That we would probably see a dip in sales. That is incorrect. We've seen a massive uptick in sales because people are saying, look, I'm paying 50 grand over for the home. There's no way I'm not getting a home inspection at some point. What agents are confusing is they're telling buyers, hey, we can't make the contract contingent on your, um, on your home inspection but you can still get a home inspection. So we're actually having clients do their inspection out of what we call the, the option period here in Texas. And this is the study that you want to go and look at here. This is a really interesting one. We surveyed people across the US and we found that with this housing market being crazy and it's favoring sellers, you know, what was actually going on, all right? So 40% of Americans would be willing to pay $20,000 over asking. 30% of Americans would be okay bribing somebody to get their dream home. I thought that was amazing. But here, only 3% of Americans would actually skip a home inspection altogether. Think about how you can find out if there's times other than that inspection period that you can market to buyers and agents to get a home inspection. Um, buyers still need to know what's going on with that house. And you're one of the few experts that can actually go in and tell them exactly what's going on and what do they need to take care of. The concept to me, of a client buying a house without a home inspection is horrifying. You can go read our national study as well and see like the information we bring out on what's 
what's showing up in home inspections in our top 10, it's basic things like smoke detectors and, and just things that you really should be fixing that's not expensive. Um, but just think about how else can you get somebody to get a home inspection, even if the contract is not contingent on it. Um, so let me just go. There was one more question here as well. So from James in Nebraska, we have home selling without inspection. That's a lender. Yeah. So this is this comes back to the same kind of thing. Um, how can you go and find out and use data to get in front of clients to get a home inspection after the fact? Super easy, guys. Use these same tools, realtor.com and Zillow. Set yourself up on Redfin, okay, for free with an account to get an alert when a home sells in your market, in that market, okay? Very easily create some marketing pieces. You know, didn't get a home inspection. It's important to get your home inspection. Here's why. Reference our national studies, educate people, and you can get something as easy as a door hanging service or really dedicated direct mail that you could sit down. Let's say you need 30 homes per month, right? 30 inspections per month. Sit down, write a marketing letter that's very genuine, that goes to the homeowner, you know, dear, whatever, you can pull the name from the tax record. In this hot market, it appears a lot of buyers are skipping the home inspection during the purchase process. You know, ABC inspections, that concerns us. There's a lot of safety issues that you should be thinking about when you buy a home. We do a post-closing inspection. Here's the pricing. I'd love the opportunity to earn your business. Just think that you can use this data that's out there that you can get for free. It will tell you every home that's sold in your market. And if you suspect that people are skipping the inspection, go direct to the consumer after the closing, right? It's very easy to do. Um, we, we did this using data basically to get listings. We looked at when people were most likely to move. For you folks, you know they've already moved. They've already closed on that home because it's been changed to close status in the MLS. So you know there's a high chance that they didn't get a home inspection. Go after them, educate them, and let them know they can get a home inspection after closing. Um, and that's something we're doing on our side with the repair price to help educate the public. We've had a piece in the Washington Post and the New York Times recently trying to explain to people that it doesn't just have to be during the purchase process. So, um, so this one's from here. How do you price the inspection service? Um, honestly, unfortunately, folks, not my area of expertise. Um, we work with home inspectors all across the US and it's very, very different uh, depending on your market and the products that you offer. I, as an agent, like I said, I don't really know what my home inspectors use, uh, used to price their services for. It was very different across the board. It was not something I told my clients because I understand the pricing changes all the time as well. So I would say try not to use your price as a USP. What you're going to get is the bottom tier of people that probably care about that, that somewhat. Your top producing agents, it should not be a concern for them. Um, like I said, I've got plenty of inspectors we work with that only work with very high-end homes. That's their farm, is luxury markets. And the buyers are more than happy to spend $1,000 for a home inspection when they're spending $3 million for their house. So I would say definitely look at the socioeconomic groups in your area um, and what they can afford, you know, what are salaries and that kind of thing and what's typical, but you've also got to make money as a home inspector. And I don't think you should have to um, price yourself out of the market or use price to drive referrals if you're using this method. If you're going direct to consumer, that could be a concern, but I would say if you're going to agent, price should not be a major factor. So, um, Guys, what I will do, there's some ask for requests on these data things. Like I said, I do have an article um, on our website. You will be able to find it on this recent articles page. If you go to repairpricer.com, I will make sure that gets updated, okay, as well with any extra information that I've put today. Most of it's going to be there for you. Um, and it's called how to win referrals from top agents. And if it's okay with Jacob, like I said, I will put this out after the presentation as well on the webinar page. So you guys can link to that. Um, we have one more question. Cool. I think everybody's good. Um, Jacob, do you have anything else to add before we wrap up? Um, no, Christian, uh, just, yeah, just send me over any uh, notes that you'd like uh, or, or links to me. Um, I can just underneath the recording uh, later today, I can just add any uh, informative links uh, that we could direct any of these viewers to. Um, yeah, so uh, Christian, just uh, thanks for coming on today and presenting how to uh, 
on how to attract high-end agents. Um, I think everyone today found value in this presentation and I appreciate you making the time for this. No, no you're welcome. Um, like I said, I enjoy training and teaching. I go to a lot of conferences, guys. If you see us come up and say hi, like helping inspectors grow their business, that, that's what we do. Um, so I really appreciate everybody showing up today. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We're here 24-7, 365 at Repair Pricer. Perfect. Great. And uh, just to let everyone know, they, there will be a recording of this presentation up on nachi.org slash webinars. Uh, remember, you can register for any upcoming webinars and view any of our previous ones on that webpage, nachi.org slash webinars. Um, again, Christian and everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. Stay healthy and happy inspections. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.